Let's return to those stress tests on EU banks. Our next guest says the results are a good start, but resolving the sovereign debt crisis requires far more fundamental changes in how Europe operates. Karsten Breschke is chief economist at IMD Belgium, and he joins us now from Brussels. Karsten, good to see you there. To what extent is it good news that out of 90 lenders, only eight banks failed? Should we be relieved all round? I think, of course, if you look at the, uh, the results at face value, you should be relieved because uh, we also saw that the big banks, actually, they all passed. I think that uh, the Spanish big banks were amongst the, uh, the best performing banks. So this should uh, take away some of the doubts about the stability of, of the Eurozone's uh, banking system. Of course, nevertheless, um, there has been criticism um, that, that the, the stress test scenarios, especially the one on, on sovereign debt, uh, were almost outdated because everyone is now talking about a possible debt restructuring. We, we should give them also some credit uh, because actually it wasn't the second uh, stress test at all. It was the first stress test of a new European um, banking authority. So um, give them some time to really to come up with, with a good stress test scenario. So it's going to take a while. And I think anyone with this week's EU summit or Eurozone summit, um, the results of the stress test will only be secondary and probably no one will talk about it uh, as of tomorrow. And what are you expecting from this summit on Thursday? More of the same? More talk talk? Because certainly if you look at the pressure on the euro, that is increasing. If you're looking at those peripheral bonds, the yields are increasing. Are you expecting any sort of breakthrough? Uh, I hope so. Um, and I must say, if, if, if I take, uh, let's say, what Mrs. Merkel said yesterday for, for granted, she said that she would only come to Brussels if the all Eurozone countries will really deliver something. So uh, let, let's hope that she really um, makes her words come true, because I think the, the times of just tough talk, of, of strong commitments about the solidarity of Eurozone countries is not sufficient anymore. We really need to see a breakthrough. We really need to see um, how the Euro Eurozone is willing to, uh, to deal with uh, the debt sustainability issue in Greece and also how the Eurozone would be willing to deal with other Eurozone countries. And I think this requires a more fundamental decision. What kind of monetary union do we want to have in the Europe in the next five to ten years? And how do you see, how do you answer that if you are sitting there and trying to come up with that sort of decision? What sort of fundamental change could you envisage? And would you like to see to get this crisis off the headlines? I think we, we, have, we have two main scenarios here, and then it's up to politicians to, to make uh, the decision. The first one would be to really go uh, say, no, there won't be any default, there won't be any debt restructuring. We will move towards a political union. We will move towards a centralized monetary union where we have uh, Trichet's famous uh, Eurozone uh, finance minister, where also the rich countries will pay for the poor for as long as it takes to get the uh, periphery countries back on track. That's option one. Option two would be to accept, no, this is not, uh, a political union will not be um, possible in the core Eurozone countries. It's politically not attractive, so we will keep this cooperation among countries. And if we want to keep this cooperation without having a centralized political union, we will have to accept that a country will need to go um, through a debt restructuring. Okay. If so this is possible, so we will need money to key to... Uh, Avoid contagion. Yeah, yes, we, we, the money is always the big question, isn't it? Carsten Brischke, sorry to cut you off there. We are out of time, but I'm very grateful, and thanks for joining us on Bloomberg today.